Dr. Osborne here, founder of Gluten Free Society. In today's research update, I want to talk a lot about diet and arthritis, particularly autoimmune arthritis. If you're suffering with rheumatoid arthritis or lupus or reactive arthritis or ankylosing spondylitis or psoriatic arthritis or Reiter's syndrome, any of those forms of autoimmune arthritis, pay close attention. Because in this research review, I'm going to shed light on how diet change has effectively improved a number of people in research, their outcomes with their illness and with their disease. Now, I'm going to put a slide on the screen for you right here. What you're looking at is a article, actually it's a diagram. This was published in the journal Frontiers in Nutrition here very recently. And so what you're seeing on that top left hand side of this diagram are factors that are known to contribute to inflammatory arthritis. So you see there food antigens. What does that mean? That means food allergy. We're talking about food allergies or sensitivities. Foods contributing to the actual illness itself. Foods contributing to increased inflammation leading to a reaction against your own tissues, your joints and your soft tissues. Of course there are other factors beyond food. I don't I want to be very clear and say that, you know, gluten going gluten free is not the cure all for all forms of arthritis, but it's a great place to start looking. And this research study agreed. So food antigens. Second on the list, environmental factors. This is chemical exposure. Many of you are exposed to a number of different chemicals. Just in food alone, there are 3,000 chemicals approved by the FDA that uh, we really have never done any long-term great safety data on. They're just, they're approved and they've been approved uh, for a number of years and we're being exposed to them on a day in, day out basis. Chemicals like preservative agents, dyes, things like synthetic flavors and natural flavoring agents. These are chemicals that again you're being exposed to on a day in, day out basis that can play a role in the development of autoimmune arthritis. We've also got other factors, epigenetic factors, meaning not your genes, we can't blame your genes, but beyond your genes. Some of these factors include things like infectious microorganisms. Some people develop or start to develop their autoimmune arthritis as a result of infections like Lyme infection or Klebsiella infection or parasitic infection or yeast infection or viral infection. So these are epigenetic factors that can certainly play a role in the development of these rheumatological diseases as well. So below, if you look over to the right hand side on this diagram, so you, I, you know, we just mentioned food antigens and environmental triggers and infectious triggers. But if you look at the, at the effects of these different triggers, they increase the progression of RA, they cause inflammation in the synovial membrane, that's the, the membrane in your joints. They cause a, an infiltration of immune cells coming into your joint, that's what leads to an RA, something called panis formation, which are these little kind of clumpy crystals that form in the joint that create a lot of pain. And it causes overall joint inflammation. Now if we look at the research on this, the same diagram here, there have been a number of research studies, about 31 to be, uh, to be exact, over the last many years that have shown the impact of diet change as an improved outcome for people suffering with rheumatoid arthritis. Now, the reason I bring this up is because many of you have been to your rheumatologist. Maybe you've got that diagnosis and you asked, hey, what about my diet? Should I change my diet? And, they, and most of the time the rheumatologist says what? No, diet has nothing to do with this disease. So what I'm going to show you is that diet does have a lot to do with the disease. There have been a number, again, I said 31 research studies proving that diet change has dramatic impact and effect on the progression of rheumatoid arthritis. So, number one, one of the diets that's really been well studied is the vegan diet. So, taking meat out of the diet. There are many people with rheumatoid arthritis that do better without meat. Meat can actually be a trigger. Now, that doesn't mean everyone with rheumatoid arthritis is going to benefit from a vegan diet or a vegetarian diet, but many people do, and that's what research has shown over time. Another type of diet is called an elimination diet. Now, an elimination diet, it's a food allergy elimination diet where you get tested to see what food allergens that you have and eliminate those particular foods from your diet. Elimination diets have shown dramatic improvement in people that have rheumatoid arthritis. And then there's also research that's been done on what's called an elemental diet. An elemental diet is basically, it's, it's very similar to a fast. So any of you who've got any experience with fasting where you just don't eat for a few days, 
that research has shown that fasting dramatically improves the pain of people that have rheumatoid arthritis. But an elemental diet is basically it's, it's eating very, very little and getting nutrition in you through vitamins, minerals. So you're, you're getting the basic elements or fundamentals of the diet, but you're eliminating antigenic foods. And so we see people have improvements with that type of diet as well. And then the Mediterranean diet has also been studied to be effective. So all four of these diet types, an elimination diet, a Mediterranean diet, a, ve a vegetarian vegan diet, and an elemental diet have all shown benefit for people that have rheumatological disease. And here's some of the benefits they've shown. Reduction in inflammation, reduction in synovial infiltration, meaning remember those crystals I talked about a minute ago? We see a reduction in the infiltration of those crystals into the joint with diet change. We also see less inflammation in the synovial membrane and we see a reduced rheumatological progression of disease. So a lot of you again have been told if you don't take this very powerful drug injection, many of the drugs that are out there are the, what are called tumor necrosis factor inhibitors. Uh, they're different forms of drugs used to treat rheumatoid arthritis. Most commonly, they're steroids, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, what are called DMARDs, the disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs like methotrexate, and then there are drugs that actually block TNF, TNF, tumor necrosis factor. These are the what are called biologics. And so all of these classes of drugs have very, very profound long-term detrimental effects on people with rheumatoid arthritis who don't change their diet. For example, if you're on non anti-inflammatories, we know those drugs cause gastric and intestinal ulceration. They basically tear a hole in the lining of your GI tract and that can lead to a number of other different types of complications including anemia, vitamin C deficiency, folate deficiency, and iron deficiency. We also know that drugs like methotrexate that block folate can create an elevation in a chemical called homocysteine and that chemical homocysteine can drive up pain and inflammation. Homocysteine elevations have been linked to chronic pain. So using a drug like methotrexate can have that side effect. It's why many doctors prescribe a folate when they prescribe methotrexate. Steroids cause bone loss and cartilage destruction. They block vitamin C, they block vitamin D. So again, if you're relying on steroids to reduce your pain and inflammation versus diet, you're gonna run the side effect or the gambit of side effects nutritionally associated with steroid use. And of course, the biologics, the, the greatest risk with biologics really is is they, they for lack of, uh, of being, um, well, I'll be obtuse here, they wreck your immune system. That's the bottom line. They tank your immune system. They bring it to the ground. They increase the risk for you developing cancers like lymphoma, but they also increase the risk of you developing infection. Now, if you remember earlier, we were talking about epigenetic factors that influenced the, the risk for developing RA, and one of those factors was infection. It was microbial imbalance. So here again, you're taking a drug to reduce the symptoms while you're creating the potential for a side effect that creates an infection, and an infection can cause the actual disease that you're trying to treat. So with a lot of these medications, you end up chasing your tail. So if you're on the medicines, you might even feel better, have less pain on the medicines. If you're not evaluating your diet as a potential pivot point, to get the disease under better control and need less medication or even potentially wean off of your medication altogether, you need to have that conversation with your prescribing doc or you need to find a doc who's willing to have that conversation with you. Now, kind of as a summary, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna paraphrase again from this, from this research from this research study that was published in, in, in uh, Frontiers in Nutrition. With the growing wealth of literature supporting the positive impact of diet therapy and decreasing disease activity in rheumatoid arthritis, with increasing understanding of microbiota, mediated disease, pathology, and the beneficial effects of nutrients on inflammation and immunity, our interest in dietary interventions is growing. We should work to educate and capacitate them with the benefits of eating more vegetarian, uh, diets, doing eliminating potential allergenic compounds from food or food components, and introduce more polyunsaturated fatty acids, that's omega-3 fatty acids, and probiotics in their diet plan. Early signs of RA can be potentially delayed with these dietary interventions. Folks, that's not my words. Those are the words of the researchers, and these researchers are rheumatologists. So, 
Again, if your rheumatologist is telling you that diet intervention and diet and, and supplements and nutrition play no role in the improvement of your condition, it's time to look for a doctor who might have a better answer and might be willing to work with you in that direction. Wishing you excellent health. This is Dr. Osborne. We'll see you in the next video.